Hi everybody, my name is Julie Mann. I'm a professional network marketer, I'm an actor, and I'm also an EFT practitioner. And today I'm joined by Claire Sambolino, who's in Italy. Hi Claire. Hi, lovely to be with you today, Julie. Thank you. <laughs> so Claire is actually a registered nutritionist, but before we start talking about your work, Claire, how about you tell us what it was like growing up for you? Because obviously it's all about um, you know, eating well and, um, you know, but, but how was it when you were growing up? You know, did you come from a family that put a lot of emphasis on eating well? Or how was it for you? I did. I absolutely came from a foodie family. Um, my grandmother was like the matriarch who cooked. Um, she was renowned for her Sunday lunches. We used to have classic English food, big roast dinners and things like that. Um, but we would have sort of 10, 11 veg on the side. I mean, she would literally go to town on a Sunday. I've got a huge family and a huge kind of wider family. So there could be anything up to 20 people. Um, my nanny used to make four or five desserts each Sunday. So it was a really big thing. Um, celebrations such as Christmas, especially when we all came together, were always about the food. You know, my nana would not let anyone in the kitchen. It was her realm. She would literally sort of tell us to hop it you know, until the food was ready. But I think I was just really lucky to be in a family where food was appreciated. Um, everything was cooked from fresh. Um, and, you know, my parents had a huge uh, veggie patch. So we ate fresh vegetables kind of throughout the year. Um, and I think that had a massive influence on me because obviously I was around people cooking and I was around food. Um, and that gave me an appreciation for eating well, you know, straight from, you know, from a young age. Um, and I think that's something that I've always kept with me and other people in the family actually do food related jobs, you know, so it's given all of us different incentives to go into different careers that are based around sort of food, nutrition, farming, um, catering. There's a whole raft of sort of food related family members. Amazing. Wow. What an, what an amazing Sunday that must have been. So, you know, for a lot of people have kind of have a sense of what a nutritionist, but how would you describe the job in, of a nutritionist? And, and was that the first job you ever had? No, so it actually wasn't the first job I ever had, um, but I have always worked in the food industry. And I think there's a kind of common misconception that being a nutritionist is just talking about food and talking about how to cook food, prepare food. Um, and actually the training is anything but because we really go into the biology, the science, we go into, you know, all of the different uh, mechanisms that are happening in the body. So it's quite a scientific field. Um, and having worked in the food industry for years and having a love of food in general, I suddenly really wanted to kind of delve into the science a bit more, understand it a lot more, understand why eating certain foods can activate or disactivate sort of different biological functions and really optimize our health. So for me, it was a decision that came later. Um, I went back to study. So I actually went and did a master's degree in personalized nutrition and lifestyle medicine. And it's very, um, you know, it's very much about evidence-based practice, looking at the science, the data, looking at all of the, the um, I think the best way to put it is just sort of the biological systems and how they interact together. You know, so you look at the digestive system, obviously, because that's the core of nutrition, but you look at how that might influence our sex hormones or how that might influence our stress um, and all of the other things that can impact on our health. So you really kind of dig into the science, which I found fascinating. Um, and I really wish that I'd known that I would love it that much, because had I known that science could be so much more interesting and applied to health, I may well have done science earlier. Um, whereas my first degree wasn't a scientific degree at all. It was very much about linguistics and language and things that I'd fallen in love with at that age. Um, and then I did two years clinical practice training. So that then gave me the, the registered nutritionist title in the UK. So it allows me to practice. Um, and so nutrition really looks at what's going on in the body, what's triggering certain symptoms in people, you know, what might be out of balance from a kind of biochemical point of view. And then the food bit comes in really at the end. So then we kind of apply it to the food, to the nutrients in the food, to make sure we're getting the right mix to suit that person and to really support that person's health and metabolism, et cetera. Wow. Okay. So I know that you've got over 14 years of experience in the corporate world, haven't you? And you've worked with yeah. some amazing clients, Mars, Nestle, um, HM Food, Goodman, fielder you know yeah. why would companies like that Claire choose to work with you 
Um, well, there's different roles that a nutritionist can have in that sense. I was working very much in uh, marketing at the time. So actually I was working alongside nutritionists who were doing food development and um, a lot of the work that goes into making the produce that these guys sell. Um, more recently, I've shifted the focus to actually doing more health and wellness corporate work. So I go in and do a lot of wellness seminars and uh, healthy eating programs and I help smaller businesses more recently with sort of development of their menus of foods that they make, maybe their nutritional statements that they need to put out from a sort of legal point of view, but also a lot of the consumer speak that they might need to use. So I do lots of copywriting for food companies to explain the health benefits of their products, um, the formulation of their products, etc. So there's lots of different routes into the corporate world for nutritionists and corporate sort of consultancy. Um, depending very much on the type of business you're working with. So food companies are one obvious area that you can do a lot of work to support their products with. But I also go into banks and financial sectors to do the wellness part of the picture. So people that are working in highly stressed jobs, you know, long hours, how to really help them eat well, both at work, at home, how to help them manage their stress, their sleep, um, and all manner of things that nutrition can kind of interact with. So there's lots of different ways in, there's lots of different benefits to working with a nutritionist within the corporate environment. So, and I really enjoy all of it actually, because it's quite diverse. And um, so one minute, you know, I can be talking to a company about their paella. The next minute I'm doing seminars on sort of managing stress levels or blood glucose and energy and what to eat in, uh, you know, your 11s or lunch break. So it's very diverse, really interesting. I guess there are a lot of companies that actually of don't offer that to their their company employees so you know it is an investment isn't it actually um their being you know that they, they care about their staff and uh you know that everyone's absolutely happy. yeah yeah okay. yeah i mean it takes it takes a commitment sorry from the company to want to invest in the well-being of their employees and i think you know different companies have different cultures and different different ethoses and you know the ones who really want to drive engagement creating a sort of reciprocal environment of health and well-being for their staff actually get loads out of these programs because their staff come to work kind of engaged they're feeling good you know they perform better in the workplace ultimately so there's a lot of ways to evaluate the return on that investment but I think on a really human level employees know when the company has you know their interests at heart you know that might be offering a whole wealth of schemes but also kind of initiatives and programs such as this. Fab. So I know that you live in Italy for much of the time with your husband and your children. And also, obviously, we know that traditionally in Italy, it's very much about mealtimes being, you know, with the family, everyone sat around together. How much do you think that culture and also upbringing play in individuals' food and lifestyle choices? I think it's a really big factor. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm UK born and bred so a lot of my life was spent there so I've seen the sort of Anglo-Saxon approach to food. Um, I've been in Italy 13 years um, and when I speak for Italy I speak for quite a lot of the Mediterranean region really because I think they all share similar sort of food cultures um, and I think there's a real appreciation for food in Italy, Greece, France, Spain, all of the other countries around the Med. There's a real focus on quality of food, they're very proud of their food heritage and culture um, they're very aware of it. Like they really do understand seasonality of food. Um, they eat in season, you know, they're not necessarily importing things to have them available all year round. So for example, I'm in the mountains here in Italy and it's currently mushroom season. So it's a really big deal. Everyone's eating mushrooms for the month that mushrooms are available. Um, but there's an acceptance that you eat when it's there. You don't necessarily have to have everything um, all year round. And I think my experience in the UK is that obviously being an island, we've imported lots. We've got very much used to everything being available all the time. And I think that our food culture has, you know, evolved to such that people don't necessarily have that same contact with sort of seasons and foods and when they're available, because it's just always there. Um, so I think growing up in a culture that really premiumizes food does a lot to kind of shape and form your, your eating habits. Um, and one other thing I would add, which is obviously, because you mentioned I'm here with my children, having children has made me sort of enter the new world of schooling in a Mediterranean country. And it's a really big thing for them that the kids eat at school together. So for example, packed lunches aren't allowed. Everybody eats school lunches. So it's starting that 
culture of eating together, sitting down to eat. My children have a three course meal every day at school. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. So we're, obviously with the advent of Google, you know, we've got access to so much information on what's considered to be a healthy diet. Um, you know, but of course there are lots of differing opinions, aren't there? And, you know, a little bit of what you fancy does you good, all things in moderation, you know, sugar is the big, the new drug. Uh, and of course there are a million and one diets out there, aren't there? So, so for someone who's really confused, perhaps maybe overwhelmed or simply just too busy to wade through that stuff, you know, have you got any simple advice? I think, I mean, Dr. Google has a lot to answer for in some, in some ways. I mean, we all do it and it's great to have things at the touch of a button, but I think really when it comes to nutrition, like you say, it's very confusing. Um, the simplest I, advice I can give really is the more natural, the better. Um, and I think you've got to go back to the roots of just eating normal food. Um, and when I say that, I mean, you know, an apple's an apple. You can now find a million products on the supermarket in the supermarket that can go range from apple crisps to dried apples, squished apples, pressed apple. Sometimes just eating the apple itself would be great. So if you're confused by food, the more natural, the better, the less ingredients, the better. You know, go back to really the roots of fresh produce, meat, fish, vegetables, uh, fruit, um, less packaged produce, the better. Um, and really, I think everything in moderation is probably still for me, one of the best phrases that you can use. You don't necessarily have to take things out and limit yourself, but you also have to accept that you can't eat certain foods all the time. I mean, if you're eating lots of sugary foods or confectionery or it's little and often you've got to get the balance. So any, everything in moderation really does sum it up quite well, I think. Great advice. Now, obviously, you know, it's clear that you're a really busy woman. But about nine years ago, you started an online um, company, didn't you, called Kalila. Why did you do that when you're so busy anyway? And what is it, um, that company? It's, it was very much a passion project with a good friend of mine called Kathy Moulton, who's now leading the company. And I'm sort of stepping back a bit whilst I focus more on the nutrition. Um, it came at a time when we were two internationals. Uh, Kathy's Canadian, I'm British. And we came together in the city of Milan, both new mums with children. And we really wanted to sort of bring our expertise to helping other expats and mums that were living in a foreign country without maybe the support network that they would typically have at home. So obviously um, at that moment, our focus was very much on motherhood and maternity. So the business Kalila started off as a sort of hub online to help mums with all things about maternity, pregnancy, postnatal care. Um, my sort of expertise was very much the nutrition part of it. Kathy's a Canadian lawyer and yoga teacher. So she was very much about sort of rights for women in Italy, giving birth, birth rights, things like that, and also fitness and, you know, um, physical care through yoga and breath work. So we came together and started an online uh, company, as you said. We also launched a small clothing range for maternity wear to get women active and moving during pregnancy, which is still available online, by the way. Um, and now it's turned into an actual uh, place. So Kathy's opened up a, a studio in Milan and she does a lot more sort of work now with other specialists within the sector. So everything from midwives and and uh, doulas and all sorts of people that come and do courses and it's really a bringing together of you know women not all foreign there's lots of Italians that come to the courses too um just to really sort of share health and wellness within that that moment of maternity love it so if anyone wants to find out more about what you do because obviously this is a little sort of snapshot isn't it really but if people yeah. want to find out more how would they do that Claire um so I have my website so you can find me at clairesambolino.com uh, which is the first kind of place to see me. I'm obviously all over social media, so you can find me on Instagram, it's Claire Sambolino. You can find my Facebook page, which is Claire Sambolino Nutrition. Um, or you can email me directly at info at Um, Or you can drop me a phone call if you like. So I can maybe flash up my number at the end if you like, or, uh, or I can say it out loud if you prefer. Yeah, no, say it out loud, that's good. Yeah, so it's an Italian number, so it's plus three nine. 334-858-7982 um, and obviously you can connect via WhatsApp and other sort of free free apps um, and drop me a line. Great. Oh and LinkedIn obviously sorry add in LinkedIn at the end there Claire Sambolino. Brilliant okay so you know just to just to end with really we, we all know obviously that um, 
eating nutrient dense food and exercising is a really smart thing to do to keep us healthy. But there are many people that um, neglect their health. So what would you want to say to anyone who might be watching who falls into that category? I think quite often we don't necessarily invest in our health until something happens to us. You know, suddenly there's an incident, a heart attack or a, a diagnosis of some sort, or we're just really unwell. Um, and so really nutrition is very much preventative lots of the time. So it's about, you know, eating now for the future you want tomorrow, for the health that you want tomorrow, for the mobility that you want for tomorrow. You know, there's all sorts of things that nutrition can help with. So I think you've really got to sort of think about you know what's in your family what might you be success susceptible to what risks might you have from a personal level and you know what do you want to prevent or what do you want to aim for you know you can turn it uh, around any which way you like but I think if you want to live a long healthy life you know and be happy and mobile and fully functioning and cognitive and you know and generally go into your later life in, in, in good health then that's what nutrition really plays plays into um it can also help with aftercare after an episode of some sort so many people turn to nutrition to help them recover from something but i i really think the preventative side of it is the most important and we're all different and we all have different things that we're looking to prevent um and but all of us share the same goal to want to live a long healthy life really um and be physically fit and able to do the things that we love doing and so that's really what nutrition and good food and good health gives you Absolutely. So finally, if you could be remembered for anything, Claire, what would you like Ooh. to be remembered for? Oh, good. Oh, no, that's a, a tricky one to spring on me right at the end there. If I could be remembered for anything. Yeah, oh my in goodness. your lifetime, you know, with the work you do, what would you like to be remembered for? Um, oh, 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 anything that I've done today. Um, oh, gosh. That really is a tricky one. <laughs> That really is a tricky one. Sorry, and I almost lost you then. It wasn't deliberate uh, <laughs> switching off. Um, I would hope to just be remembered for being very accessible. One of the things that I really love is bringing kind of my knowledge and my expertise to everybody. Um, yes, you pay to come and see me, but I'm very available to talk to people. I share lots of information across all of my social media platforms. I really want to kind of spread the word on nutrition and eating well. So I would hope that most people who meet me remember me as being somebody very available, accessible and easy to talk to. Fabulous. Thank you so much for talking to me. Brilliant. Thank you, Julia. It was a real pleasure. Bye. Bye.